Teacher walkouts and protests continued this week, featuring at least 2,000 people from Jefferson and Douglas counties on Thursday, an expected crowd of over 10,000 on Friday. As we tape here at noon uh, here on Friday, we were still trying to figure out how many people showed up, but we do know that Governor Hickelooper said Thursday that he believes the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is the problem in regards to education funding. Penn, we'll start with you on this one, and I guess I was a little confused, well, I wasn't confused politically when Governor Hickelooper mentions Tabor, but what nobody has mentioned to me, maybe I've missed it, um, is Amendment 23, if I have that number right, which was supposed to guarantee education funding at a little bit above inflation, and that was going to save the day. Uh, no one's mentioned how that, that was put in the Constitution, and that, whether it's helped or hindered or done anything at all. So. Is, is the whole idea of funding and how we help teacher pay and everything else that goes into education in Colorado, is it, be, is it been given a fair shake in these protests? Uh, it, it is, but, but in broad brush strokes and, and nobody's talked about the real issue. First, uh, a shout out to the teachers who do have this, the courage of conviction to speak up, stand out, and, and talk about what should be our highest priority in this community, which is educating young kids so that they can become productive members of societies rather than something else because they don't have a high school education. You want to keep a kid out of prison? Get them educated because the vast majority of people in prison don't even have a GED, number one. Number two, you know, and viewers, please don't go to sleep, but the problem with funding education in Colorado is really a three-part convergence of constitutional limitations that have left the budget in a mess. We start with the Gallagher Amendment, which changes the ratio of taxes paid by commercial and agricultural land versus residential property. Tabor then compounded that problem, which put an artificial ceiling on what you can spend on a variety of government needs, regardless of there being no new taxes or no increases in taxes and third amendment 23 was intended as a response to Tabor to put more funding in K-12 education but since its passage because of political pressures that governors and legislators have felt different statutory enactments have been put in place to limit or to change the initial wording of Amendment 23. So at the end of the day, you got a big fiery mess there, and it's difficult to figure out, um, to find your way clear to, to fund K-12 education. But, but the, the overriding concern is we've got a disconnect in our values. Everybody can talk about I care about kids, but it's, it's simple enough to do it. You've got to put forth the ideas to change all of these constitutional provisions so you have the funding available. Ross, we see these protests across the country in different cities and states that can enact different changes. But in Colorado, as uh, Penn has uh, very well laid out, it's a much bigger mess, even if you want to make changes. Uh, what's your reaction to seeing these protests both last week and this week? Well, so first of all, the, some of the teachers protesting today, um, in my opinion, should be at the schools near where I live teaching my kids today. My kids should have been in school today, and they're not. Um, I'm very skeptical, to, to put it politely, that Tabor is the problem here. I, I think there are a lot of other issues going on. Uh, one of them, and really I think that the elephant in the room is para. And if teachers want to say they don't get enough salary, and they need more salary because cost of living is going up in, in and around Denver, fine. Uh, but there's a, a finite amount of money, and Tabor's the kind of thing that keeps us from turning into California. So I think we need to look at the entire package, what's going to retirements, what's going to salaries, what's going to administrators, what's going to teachers. I got to say, I don't understand a quarter million dollar salary for a school superintendent. Uh, Noel, Ross brings up a good point. Many people have been bringing up administration as an issue uh, not as, uh, when it comes to teacher pay. What, what are some of the angles we're missing when we see just the headlines of the story? One thing that surprised me, I had, when I moved here and um, was hearing, learning about para, and I mentioned this to my husband the other night, and he's like, what? Is teachers uh, in Colorado depend on para for retirement? They do not participate in Social Security, so they're not going to get a Social Security check when they retire. And the expectation is, I talked, to, I covered a rally last week, and the teachers all said, look, I know I'm not going to get rich. I didn't pick this profession to be wealthy. I wanted a 
decent living and then knowing that if I stuck with it for 30 something years, when I retired, I would have a secure retirement. And they feel that that's jeopardized with the way para is being handled in the state. Um, but that whole like not participating in social security, I didn't realize that they were so dependent on para. And um, I don't know, they have a hard job and a very important job, very important job. And so I, you know, good for them. I work downtown and this morning they are very loud. They are, they're causing traffic to be rerouted around Civic Center um, Park and making, their, making themselves heard. David, what's missing from the conversation from what we've seen so far? Douglas and Jeffco teachers uh, protesting at the Capitol is ironic because school uh, teacher salaries are set by the local elected school board. It's not by the state legislature. And the Jeffco and Douglas school boards are firmly under the thumbs of the teachers unions who run the schools statewide uh, in most districts for the benefit of the union bosses and not for the quality of education of the students. Agree with Penn that education is the most important thing legislate in the government activity in the state. It's 47 percent of the state budget already. In the last several decades, Colorado has, when you account for inflation and population growth and all those things, it has more than doubled per pupil spending in the public schools with close to nothing to show for it in improved education results. Shoveling more money at a failed system is not going to improve education. What does work in education? Charter schools, which are alternative public schools that are run by uh, individual buildings by the families uh, and are not subservient to the unions. Colorado's charter school students are number one in the country. They are better than every other state. We have a successful model and it's not the model of kowtowing to the unreasonable selfish demands of the Colorado Education Association.